Uh, Congressman Michael Walsh now, Republican of Florida, former Army Green Beret, sits on the House Armed Services Committee, and I would imagine that committee is very busy these days. <laughs> Congressman, yeah. thank you for being in focus. I have to start with our American citizens. And, and look, what happens with them, with enough you know, lead-up time to get them out, must look different than Afghanistan. It just has to. Yeah, Harris, here we go with Afghanistan all over again. If you listen to what the president's saying, uh, we need to be sowing doubt into Putin's decision making. Uh, and we need to be uh, of whether troops were prepared to put troops in or not. Uh, and we also, uh, you know, we need to have that leverage on the table. And I think we need to send a very clear deterrence message uh, that American citizens will not be harmed and we are prepared to act. Uh, and at the end of the day, what we face is uh, a Russian invasion where we have a lot of Americans trapped behind enemy lines and now they become leverage for Putin, yes. just like they became leverage for the Taliban that they're still using to this day. Congressman, if our American citizens left in a country in danger are not the red line that would tip us further with military action, what is? Yeah, yeah it's just fundamentally un-American, uh, in my view, to leave our fellow citizens behind, to abandon our allies, or let terrorists or dictators uh, dictate the terms. But that's exactly what, uh, that's a, you know, exactly what Biden uh, continues to do. And I think you hit on something in that he came in with such uh, a breadth and decades of experience in terms of, uh, of globe trotting the world and meeting with these folks, but it's also come in with a level of stubbornness. Uh, mm -hmm. And we're seeing that in the reporting that's coming out where he wouldn't listen to the Pentagon in terms of the policy in Afghanistan and the withdrawal. Uh, and he isn't listening now. In fact, he's taking troops off the table. I'm not advocating for thousands of American boots on the ground fighting Russians, but you have that on the table because that's how your diplomacy is effective well, uh, when they're backed by a big stick. Uh, and once again, and we saw the Obama team do this back uh, in 2013, 2014, when you remove any prospect of military response, you're green lighting uh, Putin's aggressiveness. Well, and Putin will take advantage of that. And by the That's way, right. uh, Biden's been taking numbers off the table in terms of our troops, because remember, originally it was yeah. going to be 8,500 that he would put to to be along those NATO nations that surround Ukraine, which is not part of NATO. But but they might be exposed because of humanitarian, you know, exits or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and now we're down to 3,000. I mean, I, I don't understand the strategy, but you mentioned it. So I want to get into it. Rejected. Totally and completely rejected. That's what President Biden said about the Army's scathing report on the disastrous withdrawal from Afghanistan. These are the leaders in the military, Congressman, that you were just talking about that he ignored. During that chaos, 13 U.S. service members were killed in a terrorist attack at the gates of the Kabul airport. The report harshly criticized the Biden administration for not listening to the leaders on the ground about what would happen if U.S. troops abruptly pulled out. Let's watch. It, it interviewed many military officials and officers who said the administration ignored the handwriting on the wall. Uh, another described trying to get folks in the embassy ready to evacuate, encountering uh, you know, people who are in, essentially in denial of, of this situation. Does any of that ring true to you? No. No. That's not what I was told. I just want to clarify, are you rejecting the conclusions or the, the accounts that are in this Army report? Yes, I am. So they're not, not true? I'm rejecting them. Congressman Walz, is he calling those military leaders liars? It, it sounds like it. Uh, he, he's absolutely rejecting. And these investigations, uh, by the way, are in sworn testimony. Yes. Uh, under uh, UCMJ, the Uniform Code of Military Justice. Uh, you know, it's, it's the same effect of being in a courtroom when you sign these sworn statements. Uh, the investigations I, as a commander, and everyone who's been a commander, have had to lead and sign off on. But, but taking even a step back, Harris, he rejected the advice of leaving a small force of um, special operators and intelligence 
uh, uh, operatives so that we could keep a lid on terrorism. He rejected uh, the notion that if we pull the Afghan military's air support, logistics support, intelligence support, and maintenance support, that they would likely collapse, and they did. And then he rejected uh, the advice that we had to begin the evacuation immediately while we still had military assets on the ground uh, for both our American citizens and our allies, or it would lead to utter chaos. Uh, and we saw what unfolded. And now he says, I didn't know, but I make no apologies uh, for everything that went wrong. Those 13 Gold Star families deserve answers. Uh, they deserve better than this. And I can tell you what, if we get the majority in the House in 11 months, we will get that accountability and we will get those answers. Well, look, a lot to unpack there. I can't wait to have you back in focus. I will say this. The president now, through Lucas Tomlinson's reporting, is on the phone with NATO leaders. I wonder what he's telling them this time, because he did not give them a heads up about Afghanistan last time. That's something that has come out in the reporting. And 2,000 pages from your military leadership, and you reject that. 2,000 pages. Yeah. It, it is unbelievable. I don't know how the American people can look at this president now and have full faith and trust that we'll get all of our people and out Harris, with his help. Like, that's my Harris, question. Maybe they'll have to get out on their own or with the help of Congress. Yeah, that's basically like what you. he said. You're on your own. But, Harris, those 2,000 pages, the Pentagon could have slow rolled that. They could have drugged their feet on that. Yeah. And they didn't. They released all of it unredacted. And I think that speaks to their level of frustration. They want the American people to know it. Congressman Waltz of the great state of Florida, thank you for being in All focus. Right.